x denotes a polynomial in one variable x. Now we have already learned how to evaluate an expression. In order to evaluate an expression, we substitute the value of a constant in place of variable in the expression and then simplify it. So if a is a constant here and we need to evaluate px at x equal to a, we can do it by substituting a in place of x in the polynomial and we denote it as pa. So pa denotes px evaluated at x equal to a. a is a constant here. Similarly, p2 denotes the value of px at x equal to 2. p negative 4 denotes the value of px at x equal to negative 4. So these are simply the notations for px evaluated at these constants. Now what is pa? We know px is equal to x square plus 4x plus 9. It is given to us. So in order to calculate pa, we need to evaluate px at x equal to a. That is, we need to substitute a in place of x in this polynomial. a is a constant here. So let us substitute a in place of x. So we get a square plus 4 into a plus 9. So we can write it as a square plus 4a plus 9. This is pa. We denote it by pa. What about p3? Now we substitute 3 in place of x. So x square becomes 3 whole square plus 4 into 3 plus 9. Now 3 square is 9. 4 into 3 is 12 plus 9. 9 plus 12 is 21. 21 plus 9 is 30. So we get a constant here. So P3 is equal to 30. So P3 is nothing but this polynomial Px evaluated at x equal to 3. And the value of P3 is equal to 30. Or we can say that P3 is a notation for 30. Now can you find Q negative 1? If it is given that qt is this. Now what is the meaning of q negative 1? q negative 1 stands for qt evaluated at t equal to negative 1. t equal to negative 1. That is we need to put negative 1 in place of t in this expression. So q negative 1 is equal to negative 1 to the power 4 minus 3 instead of t cube we need to write negative 1 cube plus 5 t square so we have 5 into negative 1 whole square this is what we have and we can simplify it negative 1 to the power 4 is 1 minus 3 into Negative 1 whole cube is negative 1. Negative 3 into negative 1 is plus 3. 5 into negative 1 whole square is 1. So 5 into 1 is 5. So we get 1 plus 3 plus 5 which is 9. So Q negative 1 is equal to 9. This is Qt evaluated at t equal to negative 1. Now px is given as x minus 2. So can you find p2? In order to find p2, we simply need to substitute 2 in place of x. So we get 2 minus 2 which is equal to 0. So p2 is 2 minus 2 which is equal to 0. 
so 2 is called the zero of polynomial px why because when we substitute 2 in place of x in this polynomial we get 0 as the value so 2 is called the zero of polynomial px whichever number or whichever constant makes the value of a polynomial zero is called the zero of that polynomial in this case if we substitute 2 in place of x in this polynomial this polynomial becomes zero and we say that 2 is the zero of the polynomial px now what is the zero of this polynomial so let us try to find the zero of this polynomial by trial and error we substitute y equal to 0 so q0 gives 0 plus 1 which is 1 so 0 is not a 0 of this polynomial we check for 1 so we find q1 that is we substitute y equal to 1 so this becomes 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 so 1 is not a 0 of this polynomial now check for y equal to negative 1 so q negative 1 we need to substitute negative 1 in place of y so negative 1 plus 1 becomes 0 so we have got the value as 0 so we can say that negative 1 is a 0 of this polynomial qy because if we substitute negative 1 in place of y in this polynomial we get 0 that is the value of this polynomial becomes 0 at y equal to negative 1 hence negative 1 is the 0 of this polynomial qy so 0 of a polynomial is that value at which the polynomial becomes 0 now we need to find the zero of this polynomial pt pt is a polynomial in one variable t it is equal to 2t minus 3 so we need to find the zero how can we do it one way is by trial and error now by trial and error at times it may take you a lot of time to reach at the correct answer so we need to have a better method to arrive at the zero of a polynomial now observe what do we mean by a zero of a polynomial the zero of a polynomial is that value of t at which this becomes zero so the value of p at which this becomes zero so we can write that zero is a value of t such that pt equal to 0 since pt is equal to 2t minus 3 we can say that 0 is that value of t such that 2t minus 3 equal to 0 now this is a linear equation in one variable we have learned how to solve a linear equation in one variable so we can solve it to get t is equal to 3 by 2 so 3 by 2 is the zero of this polynomial if we substitute t is equal to 3 by 2 in this polynomial we get zero note that zero is the value of t that is zero of any polynomial refers to the value of the variable so t is equal to 3 by 2 3 by 2 is the zero of this polynomial so zero of this polynomial pt is 3 by 2 also the root of this equation pt equal to 0 is an equation it is a linear equation in one variable what is the root of this equation or the solution of this equation the root of this equation is 3 by 2 so the zero of pt is the same as the root of this equation so we can say for any polynomial px the zero of that polynomial is the same 
as the root of the polynomial equation px equal to 0 so the zero of a polynomial is the same as the root of the equation px equal to 0 it is the value of x at which the polynomial becomes 0 so these two are the same so we can use this equation in order to calculate the zero of the polynomial. Now can you answer this question? Is negative 5 a zero of Ry? In order to check whether negative 5 is a zero of Ry, we need to substitute y is equal to negative 5 and see whether we get this as a zero. So R negative 5 is equal to 25 minus 5 instead of y we substitute negative 5 so 25 negative 5 into negative 5 gives us 25 so 25 plus 25 is 50 which is not equal to 0 so negative 5 is not a 0 of ry negative 5 is not a zero of ry. Now what is the zero of this polynomial qx? Again, in order to find the zero of this polynomial, we can find the root or the solution of this equation. qx equal to zero. What is qx? qx is negative 7x. So we need to solve for negative 7x is equal to zero. Dividing both sides by negative 7, we get x is equal to 0 divided by negative 7. 0 divided by negative 7 is 0. So, this becomes 0 at x equal to 0. So, 0 is the 0 of qx. So for this polynomial, the constant number 0 is the 0 of qx. Now can you answer this question? When can 0 be the 0 of a polynomial? Always, never or none of the other choices. Now when can 0 be the 0 of a polynomial? Let us evaluate the choices one by one always we have seen that zero is not the zero of a polynomial always other numbers could also be the zero of a polynomial so this option is incorrect never we have seen that when we had qx is equal to neg negative 7x the zero of this polynomial was zero because if we substitute x equal to 0, we get negative 7 into 0, which is 0. So we get the 0 as the 0 of this polynomial. So even this option is incorrect. So the correct answer is none of the other choices. Now how many zeros can be there in a linear polynomial? So this is the general form of a linear polynomial. fx is equal to ax plus b. In order to find the zero, we need to solve for ax plus b is equal to zero. Solving this, this is a linear equation in one variable. So we have ax is equal to negative b. That is transposing b to the right hand side. We get ax is equal to negative b. Now we need to divide both the sides by a. So x is equal to negative b by a. Now this is a constant term. Since b is a constant, a is a constant, this is a constant negative b by a. So we can have just one value of 0 for a linear polynomial. So a linear polynomial has one zero which is given by negative b by a where b is the constant term and a is the coefficient of x. So every linear polynomial 
has 1 0 negative b by a. Now check whether 1 and negative 1 are the zeros of px. So let us check that. So in place of x we substitute 1 p1 is equal to 1 square minus 1. 1 square is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So yes, 1 is a 0. Now we check for negative 1. So p negative 1 is equal to negative 1 whole square minus 1. Negative 1 whole square is 1. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So even negative 1 is a 0 of px. So 1 and negative 1 both are the zeros of px. So a polynomial can have more than 1 zeros also. So in this case px is equal to x square minus 1 has more than 1 0 which is 1 and negative 1. So if the polynomial is not a linear polynomial then it can have more than 1 zeros as well. What is the zero of a constant polynomial? Now this is a constant polynomial 5. What is the zero of this polynomial? The zero is defined at that, as that value of the variable at which the polynomial becomes zero. So we need to have 5 equal to zero. Now is this ever possible to have 5 is equal to zero? No, it is never possible to have 5 equal to 0. So we can never have this. So there is no 0 of a constant polynomial. So constant polynomial does not have any 0. That is, there is no value of the variable at which it will become 0. So constant polynomial has no 0. What is the 0 of a 0 polynomial? This is the zero polynomial. What is the zero of this polynomial? Well, we can write it as zero into x to the power n. Now we can have any, any number as x. We can have any real number as x. So we can have zero into one to the power anything. Zero into negative three by two to the power anything. All these will always give 0. So whatever number we may take will always get 0. So we say that every real number is the 0 of a 0 polynomial. So every real number is a 0 of the 0 polynomial. So it has infinite number of zeros because every real number is a 0 of the 0 polynomial. 